You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash theoptionsinsider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. All right, so quick, quick things. So many stories with Matt Murphy because uh, we're just, he's the smartest. He's going at 100 miles an hour, so just I'll try and uh, introduce him the way I want to introduce him, which is, He's everywhere. He's in China, I don't know, six, seven times a year. He works for Joe, uh, who created Ren Ren, which is like Facebook of China, one of the first big IPOs in China pre-Facebook. Yep. And uh, I don't know, it was a $40 billion or $30 billion company at one time. How big? Uh, about 10. 10 billion, sorry. But to a Chinaman, that's 20 billion. That's a lot. The, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what I just said. Um, and then... Uh, so Matt does all their corp dev. We hit it off. They've invested in stock tools. They've invested in maybe 100 fintech companies. They were doing fintech back when I was like, but in size. Uh, they, they're just monster workers. They love hearing stuff. They have a giant appetite for, for new ideas. And then Matt somehow is running companies as well for them, incubating them. And so we, where do you want to start with, Renren yeah. or your new company? We'll start with Renren. So hopefully we can show that we're real men on this stage. Yeah, Thank I can you show you right now. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys hear me in the back? OK. Yeah, good. Um, so as Howard said, this was originally going to be titled Renren's Global Domination Strategy, but I thought I'd uh, tone it down just a little. But we've been around for about 15 years. Um, we were actually uh, founded as one of the first real name social networks in the world. Um, and we were backed by Excel when Facebook was backed by Excel. And it's funny, Kevin, who was the partner, tried to get us to merge back in 2005. Uh, we said no, probably a bad idea, but that's okay. We took the company public in 2011, did pretty well. Um, so we have about 300 million consumers that use our social platform within China, mainland China specifically. A few years ago, we started to realize that you know, some interesting things were going on in China. Mobile and social weren't really the place to be at that point in time. There's this uh, amazing small little company called Tencent with WeChat that has, what, 93% of the uh, Chinese population on the product. So competing with them was probably a, a fierce battle that we, uh, we were looking to find another battle. So we started rolling out uh, financial services. Um, this was a few years back. Um, and these were were, you know, basically taking the 300 million consumers that we have and rolling out at the various stages of their life, right? So we have high schoolers, college students, fresh grads using our social platform. So we started rolling out student loans. We started rolling out auto financing. We started rolling out microfinancing for cell phones. And quickly, we became the largest uh, reseller of iPhone 6s in all of China. Um, then we got into the um, uh, auto floor plan financing business. And now we're the largest floor plan financer in China, doing about uh, 12 to 15 billion a year on that business alone. So really interesting business. We're not just the Facebook of China, as people call us. We're more of a social finance play. Um, but as we've been doing that, we've deployed over a billion dollars in capital off the balance sheet. Um, and as Howard said, we've been doing fintech before it was called fintech. Our first investment was a small little company incubated out of Stanford called SoFi. Uh, SoFi is now the leader by far in refinancing student loans. They do over a billion dollars a month in lending volume, but they're also huge in the mortgage play as well. Um, we backed a very interesting company called Aspiration. Joe's back there in the room. Um, and so we're, we have a focus on financial technology, logistics, and health technology. And it all wraps back to kind of a global 30-year um, plan of where we see the world moving. And so our biggest investor is SoftBank, Mashiosi san who just launched a $100 billion fund. And he pushed us to think very long, right? And when I talk to people in the US and I say a 30-year plan, they, they're like, what do you mean, a three-month plan? No, it's 30 years. China's been around for thousands. So we think very long term. How does technology really reinvent these core fundamental industries? And that's why we back companies like Aspiration or SoFi or StockTwits uh, or TruckerPath, which has 30% of the independent truckers using their platform. And now they've launched an enormous marketplace for moving goods across the country. 
Um, so that's a little about what we're doing there. Um, as we look to where the next sectors that we really want to bring technology in and disrupt, fintech, we believe, especially from a lending perspective, all the winners are clearly chosen, right? There, there's not going to be another lending company that comes in and disrupts, you know, a SoFi from that standpoint on student loans. So we're looking for that next area. And there's two areas that we're really excited by. One is obviously insurance. We've been excited about it for a couple years. Um, it seems to be what everyone's talking about today. But the area that not everyone's talking about that we're very excited and actually putting our own time and effort against is the real estate technology space. It is very close to fintech, right? Mortgages are a trillion dollar a year business, but the real estate technology space, when it actually applies to agents and brokers, that's about $70 billion to $80 billion a year in commissions that these folks earn purely on the residential side. You put the commercial side, and it's, you know, it's more than double. Um, but this slide's not that clear. Sorry about that. It's, a, it's kind of a cluttered mess right now, to be honest. And so we went to this space, and we tried to say, OK, who is really disrupting um, the day-to-day -day for real estate agents? And not removing real estate agents out of the equation, but actually empowering real estate agents with better technology to to do their job better. And we, we met, I think, over 200 companies in the space, and, and they were doing little things like you know, helping an agent search for homes for their customers and do better property alerts, or helping an agent you know, schedule an open house. It was all these tiny little things that honestly really didn't matter. They weren't big enough to matter. We wanted someone who was actually going to go in and disrupt that $80 billion of commission and help agents be more efficient with their time and make more money. Um, and so we actually decided to build a product. Um, called Chime. Uh, it's kind of, you know, because we're an operating business as well as a venture, we have, I think, over 1,200 developers at our disposal. So we put about 120 of them on this business and launched it in about six months. And basically what it does is it gives real estate agents, brokers, and teams uh, the ability to have all of their lead generation, their CRM, their workflow management, their website, everything all in one simple platform. But then as Howard was talking earlier, we're using some advanced technologies that to us in this room aren't advanced, but in the real estate space are almost scary. And those AI, machine learning, deep learning, uh, we're using AI to actually automate a lot of the workflows for agents. So for example, when we buy a new lead from these agents off Facebook, which we know Facebook very well because we built the equivalent, we can growth hack and find really high quality leads there. When we buy that lead, we put it in the CRM system and then we actually automate the communications. We send out a welcome text message to the customer from the agent saying, thanks so much for reaching out. Let's schedule a time to talk. Click on this link. Schedule time. We'll do a showing. And so we're, we're removing a lot of the mundane tasks that agents have to do on a daily basis and driving more efficiencies. What's interesting is typically when an agent gets a lead off Zillow, that lead converts at a 1% rate. With our technology, I have agents converting at 9 to 10% right now for sellers. So that's a lot of money. In the Bay Area, the average commission's uh, 50 grand. So can you imagine doing a few more of those deals? You're doing pretty well. So that's what we're building here. Um, we have about 150 people in the business right now. Uh, just chose to open up our headquarters in Salt Lake City. Uh, which if anyone hasn't looked at Salt Lake City lately, I highly recommend it. There are probably some of the best salespeople in Salt Lake. And I joke, but if, if you can sell religion for two years, you can sell a CRM system, right? <laughs> it's the easiest thing ever. Um, they're phenomenal. So we're opening up a huge office in Salt Lake City to build this business. So um, he's going to look at all, all the pitches here, Matt, yeah. as well. So uh, it's exciting to have him here with that global perspective. So for the entrepreneurs after... Uh, hit them up with questions. Uh, any questions quickly from anybody before? All right, we'll keep it moving Season. along. Thanks so much, yeah. man. But uh, he's hanging out with us to hear these pitches coming up, and then we'll uh, network after the event. Okay, great. Good. Thank you. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.